Yes, you'll notice that the ad campaign for Mockingjay Part 2 hasn't focused on the franchise coming to an end, but instead the journey of Katniss Everdeen. That's because if you look at distributor Lionsgate stable of films, they really are the house that The Hunger Games built. And like any studio that's been built by a single franchise, they are loath and unlikely to let it go. Plus, Lionsgate doesn't even have any other franchises to lean on. Divergent has sprung a box office leak, as has The Expendables. But perhaps Now You See Me will magically turn into a franchise, with its sequel set to hit theaters this coming summer. But speaking of box office leaks, The Hunger Games seems to have sprung one itself. While the first two films opened at around $150 million, Mockingjay Part 1 debuted with $30 million less, and the latest industry projections for Mockingjay Part 2 have it coming in below that. What a time for star Jennifer Lawrence to be asking for more money, right? Male movie stars might make more money, but their box office performances are heavily scrutinized as a result. Rarely are jokes made at the expense of female talent when one of their movies fails to open big at the box office, with perhaps Angelina Jolie the only shoulder Lawrence will have to cry on. Yet even Jolie has never posted numbers like Lawrence has with The Hunger Games and X-Men Days of Future Past. And with Lawrence being very vocal about not just being paid less so far, but making decisions about future movies largely based on the size of the paycheck offered, Everyone will be watching very closely as Mockingjay Part 2, X-Men Apocalypse, and Passengers with Chris Pratt debut to see if she's indeed worth the extra cash. But perhaps what has jeopardized Mockingjay Part 2 the most is that a large number of moviegoers simply didn't enjoy Part 1. And this franchise could become a warning against not only breaking up a final book into two parts, but also against shooting those two films back to back which doesn't allow any room to course correct if mistakes are made. Lionsgate has also moved very aggressively against online coverage for this latest installment, creating far less conversation online for Mockingjay Part 2 in comparison to previous entries, from both professional outlets and fans. So are the odds still in this franchise's favor, or has its image transitioned to one more in line with the Capitol than the Rebellion? Oh boy. Okay. Some of you are going to be very happy, like me. But some of you are going to be very sad. Let me explain. With Mockingjay Part 1, a lot of people uh, made excuses for that movie saying, well, look, it's slow, it's uh, got a lot of talking in it, there's a lot of exposition, because they're just getting ready for the explosive finale, which will be jam-packed full of action, right? Right? Wrong! Having seen Part 2, I can tell you that it is very much the continuation of Part 1. And there is actually, with the exception of one action sequence, pretty much no action. Uh, and it continues to be a lot of talking and uh, etc, etc. It's basically Part 1. Just literally, they just pick up where they... They literally just made one giant movie and cut it in half, right? So, be prepared. Now, luckily... Again, I liked Part 1 quite a bit, as you might recall from my review. But do I like Part 2 as much as Part 1? I mean, it is a continuation of the same movie as I just said, right? Well, yes and no. And the reason that it's not, I don't like it as much is because I think that there are some elements of the finale that the movie nails, but there are some elements where I'm sad to say they considerably drop the ball. And I'll discuss that specifically uh, in my spoiler review. I'm not giving away any spoilers here. But here, and these are my notes here, if you're wondering what I'm looking at, here I can say that this movie has, this franchise, well, up until this point, it's going to keep going without Katniss, but these movies have been about Katniss. And that continues to be very much the situation with the finale. Perhaps actually I think more than ever. Uh, in the past, I think we've gotten a really good feel for the other characters, but in part two, it was very much the Katniss show, which in some ways, again, pays off, in some ways doesn't. And I'm going to focus on, uh, here in the non-spoiler review, how it pays off. And the way it pays off is that, you know, Suzanne Collins wrote a young adult novel about a female heroine. And I think that, 
you really can feel that with the finale. And I like books like that. Uh, and a lot of people do. And if you like that kind of book, then you're going to like this movie. I think it realizes that very well. And Katniss Everdeen is one of those rare movie characters, and she's become a movie character, where everybody gets it right. The director, the writer, the costume designer, uh, you know, uh, and of course our actress, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Everybody contributes to create a character that I think will be one for the ages. One of the great movie characters uh, that everybody just, you know, up there with like Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, Han Solo, etc., etc. I think Katniss Everdeen is at that level. Ellen Ripley, right? Uh, let's get a female character in there besides Katniss Everdeen. But, you know, there aren't as many. Uh, and this movie does have some very strong feminist undertones, which we'll get to in a moment. But I think that Jennifer Lawrence you know, and I have my personal problems with Jennifer Lawrence, but that's how good she is here. She is just so amazing that you just can't be, you can't help but be in awe of her performance. And I also really liked that they gave her so many uh, hero moments. I'm, I'm attributing a lot to Jennifer Lawrence because she's, at the end of the day, she's the one who has to sell it. And she, she's not only the face of the rebellion, she's the face of this franchise. Uh, but they give her a lot of hero moments, which I really enjoyed watching, by the way. I was like, oh, that's awesome. You really are a hero. But what was even better is they weren't even just hero moments, but they were moments of both strength and weakness. And it's so great to see a female character, or any character, uh, portrayed so dynamically. Now, I said there are some uh, strong feminist undertones, and that's because not only was Katniss the hero of the movie, but almost everyone in this movie that she interacted with was a woman, as particularly in the military. You have coin, you have all the commanders. Um, and I almost at some points felt like I could have been in Themyscira, you know? So I, I have mixed feelings about that, which I'll discuss more in the spoiler review. Now, uh, as for the two most important men in this franchise, uh, Snow and Peeta, they both have fantastic uh, fin uh, finales to their characters. Uh, they both, you know, again, it's the Katniss show, but I think both of them, uh, I think that fans of both will not be disappointed. I certainly wasn't. Uh, also, the world building continues to be very good in this franchise. However, and I'll go into specifics, there were flashes of the old fr of the other movies here where you were like, ooh, I love it. You know, Francis Lawrence, great job. Uh, but he's the director, for those of you uh, unaware. But I will say that for the first time, when they would have the characters not be like on the front lines and stuff, it felt contrived. It felt like a plot device. I was like, why aren't we on the front lines? Or that's convenient, right, for the budget? Ha, ha, ha. So that was a little bit uh, bothersome. I also think that the franchise's overall core strength, besides Katniss, is its message about politics and war and the people who wage both. And I think fittingly, to the end, or at least to the end of this group of movies, it kept up with that sophisticated depiction, which I really appreciated. Now, also, some people are saying this movie is too dark, but I would like to point out that the message of encouraging people to think for themselves and open their eyes and not just blindly follow others uh, is really crucial and important and a message we really haven't seen anywhere, and in, in, certainly in popular entertainment. You know, usually they're talking about how great heroes are, I mean, leaders are, and you should follow people like Katniss, but Katniss is like, don't follow me, think for yourself. And I think that's really uh, admirable, and I like that a lot. And that's a very strong message, particularly today with uh, some of the, uh, you know, let's just say recruitment that's going on. I think that this movie, that it speaks to that, is I think very appropriate. And also, yeah, the world is dark, and you have to if you if you don't face it, then you, if you want to be comforted by like the fantasy that everything's okay, then you will let other people make decisions for you. But if you look at look the dark world in the eye, like this movie does, then it's depressing, sure, and it's difficult, and it's a downer. But at the end of the day, you'll be better off for it. So I really. Highly recommend Mocking J Part 2. I enjoyed it very much. It wasn't the spectacular finish I would have liked, but I certainly felt it was very satisfying. And it really, I, mostly a very, very solid film. I really liked it quite a bit. Uh, and if you just didn't like Mocking J Part 1, lower those expectations. But I would still go see it because there's a lot of really good things here. And, uh, you know, you watched all the other ones, uh, but the, the movie deserves a better recommendation than that. It's good. So that's my review, my non-spoiler review of Mockingjay Part 1. I look forward to continuing the conversation with you down below. But if you want to talk spoilers, my spoiler review will be going up tomorrow morning, and then we can go to town there. All right, thank you so much, and you can check out some other episodes right now. 